Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After the framework casting has been fitted to the master cast perfectly, any combination clasps on the framework must be adapted to the abutment teeth to provide the correct amount of retention. As we have seen in the wax up stage and in the casting, the combination clasp was adapted approximately one quarter of the way around the abutment tooth. The final adaptation is done after we are sure that the framework fits the master cast. The actual adaptation of the combination clasps to the abutment teeth is a very simple procedure and can be made much simpler if a predetermined sequence is used. The only pliers needed are the 118 pliers the 200 or bird beak pliers and a pair of side cutting or wire cutting pliers. No other pliers of any kind should be used. They would put nicks in the wire which would cause premature or easy fracture of that wire. If the survey lines and design had not been drawn on the master cast prior to this time. They must be done before we adapt the wire to the master cast. The wire itself must conform to the abutment tooth so as to engage the correct amount of undercut at the middle of the buckle of the tooth be away from the abutment tooth at the distal buckle and sweep upwards and be slightly away from the tooth at the mesial buckle. Now we will show you how to bend the wire. With the number 118 pliers with the beaks closed or with your fingernail and with the casting firmly seated on the master cast and the abutment tooth braced with your opposite thumb, press against the wire with the pliers. This wire is in its soft state after the casting procedure and should adapt fairly easily. If the wire is too long, we will mark the point of overextension with a red marking pen and using the wire cutters, Cut off the overextension. Replace the casting on the master cast and again using the number 118 pliers with the beaks closed, continue to adapt the wire around the abutment tooth just by pressure. In this way, usually you can adapt that wire approximately one half way around the abutment tooth. The second bend involves the use of the 200 pliers and we want to change the course of the wire so that it sweeps upward at the retentive point. The first thing we should do is denote the retentive point with the red pen. Remove the casting from the master cast and then place 
the 200 pliers on the wire at that red point with the single bink toward the area or direction you wish to move or bend the wire. Then using controlled pressure, and by that we mean bending by the use of your wrist rather than closing the beaks of the pliers, the beaks of the pliers actually hold the wire and the wrist does the bending. As you can see, the wire bends upward just beyond the red point or the retentive point of the PGP wire. It is a bend and not a sharp nick. If we place this on the master cast now, and we'll see that the wire conforms to the outline of the clasp we have drawn. It has started to bend upward beyond the rent retentive point. The last bend that is required is to bend the tip of the clasp in toward the tooth. And for this, again, we use the 200 pliers. Place the pliers against the tip of the tooth with the single beak in towards the tooth and bend with controlled pressure by just using your wrist rather than closing the pliers. And you bend the clasp in towards the tooth. We place this on the master cast. And your clasp is bent. The only thing left to be done at this stage is to remove the slight overextension beyond the tip of the clasp. So again, we will mark that with our red marking pen. Remove the framework from the master cast. Going back to your side cutting pliers, Cut off the excess. Put the framework back on the master cast, and the clasp should fit the design that you have drawn. After the clasp has been adapted, we use Moore's discs in a handpiece and we slowly round off the tip of the wire where we have cut it. We switch from the Moore's disc to Burlew wheels for final polishing of the tip of the clasp as well as the remainder of the clasp just in case there are any nicks or any roughness in that clasp. If you desire at this point you may actually begin to taper the tip of the clasp. Now that the clasp has been completely bent by using reflected light we can see that no part of this clasp is actually touching the tooth at this stage. It is bent around the tooth, but is not touching, particularly the distal buckle and the mesial buckle. Our objective now is to make the mesial or the middle of the buckle touch the tooth to provide the retention. And for that, we will remove the framework from the master cast and by using the number 118 pliers, grasping the body of the clasp with the 118 pliers and giving it just a slight bodily bend, again by using the wrist rather than closing the pliers, 
We're trying to bend the body of the clasp, actually the retentive area, in towards the tooth. So that would be the only place that would be touching the abutment tooth. We replace the framework on the master cast and by looking at the reflected light, we should see that that part of the clasp is now touching the tooth. There is no light showing. Whereas there is light showing at the mesial buckle, that part of the clasp is away from the tooth. And there is light showing at the distal buckle. That part is away from the tooth. The only part of the clasp that is providing retention is the middle of the buckle of the combination clasp. Now let us review what has been done. First, we have the combination clasp has been adapted to the abutment tooth. Next, the retentive area is in the middle of the buckle of the abutment tooth. Next, the clasp should be away from the tooth at the distal buckle. Fourth, the clasp tip should be rounded and should not touch the tooth. Last, the clasp goes more than 180 degrees around the tooth to prevent distal movement of the appliance. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.